stage. Uh, we had Davos this week. Uh, Ken, maybe at some point we can have a conversation about what went on there. My, the, what I gathered from it was, well, one, if those of you who follow the metal, the metal list, the metal, uh, whatever you call the it. Michael list. The Michael list, yeah, also known as the Michael Robertson list. He, he actually uh, wrote something I thought was really fascinating, that to go to Davos, you have to be a member of some organization, I forget what it's World called. World Economic Forum. The World Economic Forum. And what was it, almost 100,000 bucks to wind up showing up, and maybe 200,000 if you want to bring a friend. That is one <laughs> exclusive conference. I think if you bring five employees or five people with you, you're considered a strategic uh, partner, and that's half a million bucks. That is one exclusive, a really exclusive place. Um, so uh, uh, on to, but Ken, at some point we had to talk about what people were saying. What I, what I heard and what I read was that it was very upbeat. Uh, uh, and it, wasn't that, that, it wasn't like last year's. It was, it was cool. Yeah, it wasn't like last year. People weren't ashamed. Uh, all the bankers actually showed up paying themselves $8 billion uh, last year, at least one investment bank did. So uh, things are back to normal, I guess. Uh, another interesting thing happened this week, Japan's uh, debt was cut, its debt rating. And that's actually, as you can imagine, a very big deal, second largest economy in the world. It, when I read why its debt rating was lowered from uh, AA to AA minus, uh, and by the way, there's only one country in the world whose debt is not rated, and that's the United States. It's considered uh, just improper to rate the United States because the United States debt is considered to be perfect. Uh, that literally, that's how it is. It's it's just it was, it's it's con that's sort of like the standard, and everything is rated against that. So if you can, when you think about that, it's pretty amazing. Uh, yeah, even a triple A, it's not considered triple A. It's considered perfect. But uh, what S and P said about Japan was that. It has, doesn't have the political will for its entitlements to stop growing or for taxes to be increased, and that's the reason they're cutting its debt. Uh, I think there's another country that's suffering from the same thing. Uh, when that time comes where the US debt is rated, that's going to have just gigantic implications. Uh, we can go through those at another time, but uh, it just, just imagine just a 50 basis point increase, one half a percent increase in the cost of the United States debt. You're talking about you know hundreds of billions of dollars a year extra in interest payments. Um, uh, the economy, this, this we always get these uh, rolling reports of how much the economy grew in the previous quarter, and it's something I've mentioned many times. These numbers are actually made up, as our resident uh, numerical expert here, uh, Alex, would know. They really are made up, you know. They, they. Uh, but I guess as long as they're made up the same way, we get consistency. So you can kind of rely on that. But the made-up number for how much the economy grew last quarter was 3.2 percent, which is not great. Uh, but of course we're growing. The number that jumped out at me though was how much of that was based on uh, consumer spending. So uh, consumers, the growth in consumer spending was 7%. And uh, much of that was on credit, by the way. So just, you know, which is also interesting, two years after we thought we were all done with credit cards. Uh, government spending wasn't that high, and uh, business spending, growth in inventories wasn't that high. So the bulk of that 3.2% came com from consumer spending on credit cards. Uh, again, hard to imagine we're saying that two years after the credit crisis. Speaking of the credit crisis, uh, I thought this was really fascinating. So a report came out this week called the Financial Crisis Inquiry Commission Report. So that was a group of people who got together, appointed by Congress, uh, headed by Phil Angelides. You guys remember Phil Angelides? He was the former Treasury Secretary of California, which I also thought was, was pretty funny. I mean, you would want someone who had been running finances in California to tell you why things were fucked up in the US. <laughs> Uh, so uh, the, the, the first part of the report, and I'm just going to give you some tidbits, but there, there are so many interesting tidbits. It's a 600-page report, uh, so no one's going to read it. But, um, and, and there really is nothing in there that we probably don't know at a high level, but the tidbits are just, are just absolutely fascinating. Uh, first, of, cor or of course, uh, the, the report began that the crisis was due to human action, not Mother Nature. So we'll write that down. 
It was not Mother Nature. So thank God we had an 18-month report that told us this. Uh, $17 trillion was lost by Americans from Q, uh, Q4 2008 to, I think, halfway through 2009. Uh, that was when the, quote, crisis was considered to take place. But interestingly, of the 17 trillion, only 5 trillion, only 5 trillion, does anyone even know what a trillion is, was due to housing prices declining. And 12 trillion was due to people lost in 401ks and IRAs. Uh, so I mean, that you could call that, quote, real money was lost. Uh, and now for some of the, uh, the, the comical piece, I have to say, although not that funny. Uh, so first we have, uh, you know, we'll pick a random one, uh, countrywide. 68% of countrywide's a mortgage broker. I think most of you probably know that. 68% of country, the last two years before the crisis, of countrywide's loans were, were no doc loans. And now, again, those didn't seem so interesting a few years ago. But when you really consider that, no documentation. So I actually looked up. I was like, I wonder what no doc actually means. It does mean that you, you do have to give your name. You know, and give your address. <laughs> so you had to give your name, your address, how much you were making, and how much you were worth. Uh, you didn't even have to submit a picture of your house. What? You know, you did nothing. No, well, you know, it's like, oh, well, that may be an, you know, an old appraisal. No, 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 no appraisal. No picture of your house. So that in itself is fascinating. So I have to cut, by the way, to uh, uh, what Angelo Mozillo, do you guys know? Angelo Mozillo is the CEO of Countrywide. Who is the uh, only man with a deep, deeper tan than Boner? That's right, a very deep pan, tan, that's true. But, uh, so uh, first, a really interesting letter came out of these hearings, so a lot of stuff was subpoenaed. So countrywide executives um, wrote to, to Mr. Mazzillo at some point in the crisis, or I'm sorry, prior to the crisis. By the way, the loans we're originating will result in catastrophic consequences. That's pretty harsh language for a, a memo within a big company that you send to your CEO. Uh, one, of the, one of the memos then said from a, from a vice president, uh, the high risk loans that we're making will result in foreclosures that will lead to financial and reputational catastrophe for our firm. Um, that was written in September 2004. I mean, I cannot imagine, I've been on lots of boards, an executive writing a letter to my CEO, my CEO, I hope, sharing it with the board, and the board saying, um, we're at 68%, no doc loans, let's go to 100, right? That's a great idea. So I, I say that about Anthony Mozilla, who is a whipping boy, frankly, right now, but he did do a lot of bad stuff, uh, because he submitted a, um, a statement to the to the Financial Crisis Commission about it, about his behavior, and this was his, his one part of his statement. Countrywide was one of the greatest companies in the history of this country, and probably made more difference to society, to the integrity of our society, than any company in the history of America. What? Wow. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I hear do what you, I mean. Yeah. What is right? Do you have his compensation statistics? I don't have his compensation. He's one of the highest paid people in America. He was paying himself like $80 million a year. Right, Eight, paying himself $80 million a year. Uh, you know, some of the, there's so much in this report. Again, nothing here you're gonna say, oh, I didn't realize that, except for these sort of details uh, that are unbelievable. Bear Stearns, it had 11 billion in equity during the crisis, you know, prior to the crisis, 11 billion equity capital. And each day, 12 months before the crisis began, was borrowing 70 billion each night to pay off the short-term debts it was taking, $70 billion. By the way, where did you get that number? It was submitted to the Fed every other day. So, you know, we knew this. Um, for those of us in Southern California, we can all appreciate this. Everybody knows Bakersfield. Someone wrote, uh, some hedge fund of all things, wrote to the Fed uh, this hedge fund manager was probably shorting stocks at the time, but was mad that no one was coming down on the, on the financial institutions. And he said, hey, there's a, there's a city uh, called Bakersfield in California where average home prices are 155,000, this is 2003, and you know, that's up from like 50% from a couple years ago, and you, know, you just need 